Yep. All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Jason Holland. If you don't know, I am the uh, owner and travel butler with Travel Simplicity. And uh, I love, one of the things that I really get a kick out of is inspiring people, um, certainly inspiring them to travel. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is I, I was thinking of ideas uh, during this time to, um, uh, I don't know, just to connect people together and to do what I love, which is exactly that. One of my favorite things about being in the travel industry is the community of people that are in it. And uh, so I wanted to introduce you to a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Andre, and he just came on. We haven't even said hi to each other. So good morning, or I should say good hi, afternoon. Hi, hi everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, Andre, um, so he is, he is a really great guy. I met him a couple years ago. Uh, I think we where do we meet? Maybe even, uh, was it Spain or did we meet before that? Well, no, it was in Deauville. Good old okay. Deauville. The Traveler made opening night. Okay. Uh, that uh, was yeah. fun. <laughs> that was a couple years ago. It's been, uh, it feels like yesterday. But it's been a while. It's been probably four years ago. And we've uh, yeah. been Indeed. following each other around the world since then. Yeah, and, and I was happy to have you stay with us when, uh, when you joined us in, uh, in Florence as well, at Duco. I enjoyed that very much. Yeah, I had the pleasure of staying with uh, Andrea, and, and in fact, his uh, family has a lovely villa right in the middle of Rome. It's a place that you can actually stay. In fact, I'd love you to go there, not only because it's a great place to stay, but it's a fantastic opportunity to meet Andrea, to meet a friend of mine. Um, so I wanted to just talk. I mean, I wanted to actually, I wanted to not talk. I wanted to hear some of the stories. Um, <laughs> how about you just tell us about your place, man? Just, uh, I know you, you've got a great um, background too of how it all came to be. And uh, tell us about your family home. I'll be very happy to. I'll try not to be too boring, but it's, uh, no, it's kind of a, um, of a very interesting story, I have to say. I'm a, I want to start it by saying that I, I have to admit that I'm a very, very lucky person, as uh, I was lucky enough to be born in the in this Paletti family that has a very important heritage that I hope I'm doing a good job with. But I'll, uh, I guess, uh, we'll have to ask my great great grandmothers and grandfathers if they agree with this uh, with this <laughs> statement. I wouldn't say it myself. And, uh, and to have Villa Spalletti as, uh, as our home. Because uh, literally Villa Spalletti has always been our house. It's, uh, it's been a hotel for a very short um, time span compared to the, to the period it was actually our private house. Yeah. So just a very quick background as Villa Spalletti was, uh, was built by my family. So nothing existed here where I'm sitting right now. Before 1896, when my great great grandmother, Gabriella Rasconi, decided that we, it was about time for us to have a home in Rome. Since, uh, well, Italian history is, uh, is pretty interesting as well, because obviously I think everyone knows that Italy until 1870, practically, literally 1861, was not even a, a united country. So when finally, with, uh, with Garibaldi and the Piedmontese, and obviously with a lot of help from the French, we managed to reunite the country. Then it was a matter of choosing a capital city. And my great-great-grandfather back then, he used to be a senator of the kingdom. So he used to work in the Senate, in the capital, the first capital of Italy that was Turin in Piedmont. After that, Florence became the capital city. And latest, once in 1870, the, they managed uh, with the assault of Porta Pia, which is literally an um, 800 meter walk from the hotel. The, the, the army back then, which obviously was not the Italian army yet, but almost, okay. broke into Rome and, um, and took Rome back from the, from the Pope. Because Rome has been ruled and governed by the Pope for over 600 years. And, uh, and in 1870, Rome was then nominated the capital city of Italy. But as you can imagine, having switched three capital cities in 10 years, back then my great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother didn't really trust Rome to stay the long-term capital, especially because of all the, let's say, the tension that was there between the, 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 the religious power that was the Pope and the newly born Italian, uh, Italian country, 
that wasn't officially recognized by the Vatican as an independent country until 1929, when they found a, a negotiation with, uh, with Benito Mussolini, and that Italy was officially recognized as a, as a country by the Vatican. So they were skeptical about how long they, will have, they would have to, to stay in Rome. So initially, they stayed at a friend's house. Okay. They kind of overstayed their welcome because they had to stay there for a few months. They stayed there 15 years. <laughs> but, uh, I would say so. <laughs> yeah, but luckily enough, the, the, the friends were very patient and nice. So they didn't kick, kick them out. They stayed there. And then when Rome was obviously clear to remain the, the Italian capital city, and hence my family having to officially and for good move here, they decided it was about time to thank their friends, pack up their stuff, and find something, let's say, more definite. Okay. And, uh, and luck wanted that since my, my great-great-grandfather was a senator of the kingdom, so working in close relation with the king, and his wife, Gabriella Rasponi, was the lady-in-waiting to the queen at that time, they were very lucky to find a plot of land, which is again where I'm standing, I'm sitting right now, and where you where you stayed a few years ago. Which is an amazing and, place. It's a great yeah, location. What? Sorry. It's a great location. It's it's incredible because if you think that in 1895, when they actually started looking into this plot of land, there was nothing built. This was actually part of an old convent, and these were their gardens. Okay. And um, and hence they could build a villa from scratch, not only with a very easy commute to their office, especially my great great grandmother's, because she simply had to cross the street, and she would be in the Quirinale Palace that used to be the king's palace back then and is now the presidential palace, and uh, so close that legend wants that at one point there was a secret passage built between the Quirinale Palace and here underground going underneath the, the Quirinale Gardens that we have in front of the hotel to allow the king and queen a very quick escape in case of a siege at the Quirinale Palace. And from here, they would have had a chariot taking them away. Have you that ever found a, anything like that? It wouldn't have been a speedy escape, but would have given them a chance. And obviously, we never found any, any such secret passage, so we don't know if it was just my great-great-grandmother making fun of her children and grandchildren, or if it maybe is still there. So no clue if that was a legend, or actually at one point it happened. Okay. And, uh, and it took five years to build a villa. And let me show you, because the only thing we left, what well, was left by my great grandmother, if I can turn the video around, let me see, if not, I'll do like this. Oh, there we go. Sorry, Zoom, I'm still learning. Yeah, so no. this, was all left as it was, apart from the gazebos that we added. And unfortunately, they, those ruined my perfectly English uh, grass uh, football pitches, because that's where I played football with no good results. But, you know, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and it allowed us to, to literally have this, uh, this oasis in the center of a city like Rome. And, uh, and when, 15 years ago, we decided to open as a hotel. Involuntarily, she gave us also one of our biggest competitive advantages because having a private garden that quiet and that central is not a very common thing nowadays in Rome, especially because this is, um, you would call it a villino urbano in, uh, in Italian, which literally translates to urban villa. And it means that my great-great-grandmother, in the style of that time, she built a villa that had this exact same layout and look and feel of a countryside villa. So the beautiful villas you now see in outside of Florence, Siena, mostly in Tuscany and Umbria, simply built in the heart of the city. And we are right now the last remaining completely privately owned example of such a villa. Because most of them over years have become embassies, uh, public offices, well, this is still the Spalletti Vivelli residence. And uh, so, Andre, I'm curious, what was it like growing up there? Well, I have to say, when it was a good meter shorter than I am now, it was a lot bigger than what it is. And I have to admit that it was also a teeny tiny bit scary when I was five or six and I was by myself in here, especially up dark, in the dark, because, you know, six, seven years old. You're easy, easily scared, yeah. and 
in, a, in such a big villa, because back then it was only six of us living here. Because when I was four, four years old, it was just me, my sister that was one year old, so didn't really count for much yet. And my parents, my grandfather and my great grandmother living. Well, back then, at my great great grandmother times, there were 21 people living in the villa, including herself, her husband, and obviously the entire staff. Okay. And uh, so very different feelings. And now growing up, I look back at that and, uh, I, and I feel kind of stupid, I have to say, because the, 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 the fact that, you know, every corner you turn, you were expecting to see some sort of ghost or some, some scary thing uh, still haunts my, my nightmares from when I was a kid. And, uh, and yeah, and I don't hide that a few guests uh, confirmed those ghosts. So we'll see. Maybe my, my five-year-old self was actually right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So how, how long did you live there? I mean, how long was it your family home? So the, my family, we, li- we were the, obviously the last ones to live here. We moved out at, uh, in the mid-1990s. Okay. Because after my great grandmother passed away, my grandfather didn't feel uh, like staying here any longer after living all his life with her in the house. So he decided to move out himself. And obviously, in the 1990s, for a family of four, living in such a villa, it's not really something that makes sense anymore. So we moved very far away, just across the street. <laughs> so I'm st- we're still here, just different building, different entrance. And, uh, and the villa was actually used for events for, uh, for quite some time. But we had, uh, we had a few years of which weddings, movies, conferences were all held here. So, for example, the, the, the official football for the France 98 World Cup was presented here. That's really cool. Or, I didn't know that. For our Italian friends or people that look Italian movies on TV, there's been quite a few Italian movies that have been shot here. So it's been, it's been used as a location for quite a while, but, and it was my mom taking care of it. And um, after a few years though, I have to admit, when you start doing it, and probably some of the people listening to us dealt with it in the past, when you deal with it, uh, celebrities' weddings, it's probably the time you want to start looking at a different job. <laughs> Because I have to tell you, and I was, uh, probably was the, the years 1995 to 1998, 1999. So I was, I was 10 to, to 10 to 13. So I was starting to be in my teenage years. And uh, I remember the, the amount of times my parents had to walk down at four in the morning to greet the police that wanted to obviously shut us down, uh, neighbors uh, suing us. It was basically all these uh, lovely, lovely celebrities were obviously not listening to anything we were telling them apart from nodding their heads happily and so when we were telling them that there's absolutely no fireworks 100 meters from the presidential palace in the middle of the week and they say yes you you expect them to obviously you know they they've understood they're adults they're smart come on they 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 got it no 4 a.m on thursday nights Happy 15 minutes of, uh, of fireworks in the center of Rome in a no-fly zone. So imagine the reaction of the police oh. and the neighbor and obviously the presidential palace. So let's say that that led my mom to some serious thinking and the decision that obviously done with, uh, with weddings. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't even imagine that, especially, I mean, if you guys are across the street too, you're waking up at four in the morning having a heart attack. Oh, yeah. going, what the heck is going on? It was good because usually waking up at four in the morning meant that also all the, the leftovers from the from the nuptial dinners were coming over. So I, w- I wasn't complaining that much. Because <laughs> I have to say the food that they were serving at those celebrity weddings, you can tell them everything. But one thing you can't is that their food is not good. Because I have to say, the amount of lobsters and caviar I've seen going back and forth during those weddings, hardly ever after. Oh, you know what? That brings me to a good point. You and I, we both enjoy food. Um, we'll, uh, we'll cut this off in a minute. But what is, um, where's, where's your favorite place to eat or one of your favorite places to eat? I know you took me to a really great place when we were there, but... Uh, What's a good so suggestion? Place together, which is La Taverna dei Fori, is, uh, is definitely my all-time favorite. 
I, I grew up in that restaurant. My sister grew up in that restaurant. If, imagine that 15 years ago, my sister was very famous in that place. Because my sister on the opposite of us is not a very good movie. But when she likes something, it's that or death. So they called her the Amatri Chanel. Because every time she went there, and she used to go at least a couple of times a week, she would order every time only a plate of matrichana. And she became very famous in the restaurant. And then I started going. And then my parents started going. So now it's basically a family thing. And the family that owns it and runs it, Aldo and Claudia, over the years with their dad, unfortunately, that passed away a couple of years ago, who was an amazing chef. It's just, it's just like going to, to friends for dinner. And, uh, and also, I have to say, and I'm very happy about that, uh, all of our guests really, truly love that place. But another place that I really feel like mentioning is not really a restaurant. Okay. But it's even in, more interesting. It's right probably 100 meters away from that place, the Taverna dei Fori, and it's called Fafiuque, which is a wine bar that is split in half because it's 50% Piedmontese with Andrea, the owner, and Maria, the wife of the of Andrea, she's from Puglia. So it's a Puglia Piedmont joint venture, which in my opinion is one of the best mixtures ever. And so you get the most incredible Barolo and Lange and Piedmont wines mixed with, uh, with some of the most traditional Pugliese recipes. And it's just such a perfect mix and such a well-balanced place that you will fall in love after your first sip of wine. Uh, that sounds fantastic. I know I had an, an amazing time. I'm looking forward to coming back and spending some time with you again. It's uh, Villa, we're all ready to, to welcome you and all your guests and friends uh, back to Rome because it's uh, it's been a bummer so far, and we really miss our guests. Sitting in here by myself has never happened in 15 years. So I'm glad you allowed me to reopen the villa for even just 15, 20 minutes, because it was really sad to see it closed. So I have to thank you for the, for the great opportunity and, uh, and the great talk. Yeah, you're welcome. And, and it's, uh, yeah, for those of you that are, that are gonna watch this, that are watching this, uh, just know it's a very special thing for, uh, for Andrea to do this and, and open up the villa just for you guys. So I, um, we're gonna have some more conversations with some of my other friends around the world in the next couple of weeks. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Andrea, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it.